Our scripture today is 2 Corinthians 6, 1 through 13. As God's co-workers, we urge you not to receive God's grace in vain. For he says, in the time of my favor, I heard you, and in the day of salvation, I helped you. I tell you, now is the time of God's favor. Now is the day of salvation. We put no stumbling blocks in anyone's path so that our ministry will not be discredited. Rather, as servants of God, we commend ourselves in every way, in great endurance, in troubles, hardships, and distresses, in beatings, imprisonments, and riots, in hard work, sleepless nights, and hunger, in purity, understanding, patience, and kindness, in the Holy Spirit, and in sincere love, in truthful speech, and in the power of God, with weapons of righteousness in the right hand and in the left, through glory and dishonor, bad report and good report, genuine yet regarded as impostors, known yet regarded as unknown, dying and yet we live on, beaten and yet not killed, sorrowful yet always rejoicing, poor yet making many rich, having nothing and yet possessing everything. We have spoken freely to you, Corinthians, and open wide our hearts to you. We are not withholding our affection from you, but we are withholding yours from us. As a fair exchange, I speak to my children, open wide your hearts also. This is the word of God for the people of God. And now will you join with me in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. If there are any children, kindergarten through fifth grade, that want to come with me to Splash Worship. Let us pray. If you have any prayer request, uh, you, don't need, you don't need to say it aloud. Just, I will invite you to put your hands over your heart, or where your heart can be, and let us pray to God. Heavenly Father, we give you thank you this morning for the opportunity to be here at this beautiful church worshiping you. Thank you for seeing that many friends today. Thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for let us celebrating Father's Day as well. I'm asking you for our prayer request. I'm asking you that every person who have their hands over their heart, you know what they're asking you for. Please help them. Help also those who are in needs and help us to live this life as a Christian person, showing your love to others. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. The gospel reading for today comes from the book of Mark, chapter 4, verses 35 through 41. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. 
That day, when evening came, he said to his disciples, Let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along, just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up, and the waves broke over the boat, so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. This is the word of God for the people of God. You may be seated. I will move this to the center a little bit. Um, we are doing a series called New Life in, in the Spirit. And um, at St. Matthews, he's, he's doing this series as well. And the, um, the script for this series is uh, for today, 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 1 to 13 and it's so funny because when Derek called me and asked me if I can preach today here um, to come to my mind the scripture that there the, the was the teaching gospel today in Mark so I was I, I was immersed in a fight in, in, inside me because I, I, I want to do the mark but then I want to stay um, in obedience with our series. But um, by chance, when I get here this morning, and Andrew gave me the order of worship, I saw that, that scripture. And I say, oh my gosh. Uh, and something happened to me. And, and the sermon for that scripture came right away. I was listening to you guys practicing there and, and just getting that. And I say, I will do something like preachers can't do, uh, change the sermon right away, <laughs> but I will do it. I think God will talk to you through that sermon. And do you mind to put the scripture for Mark on, um, on the TV? Um, I, will, I will read it and go through. The Bible said, that day when evening came, he said to his disciple, let us go over to the other side. And that's the theme of this sermon, go over to the other side. And I think that's something I've been here since we knew that that it would change to another congregation and a new pastor will come here. And the word was River City will go to the next step. River City will go to the other side. And, and then um, the Bible says, leaving the crowd behind, they took him alone just as he was in the boat. For me, River City is the boat. The boat who will lead people to the other side. And looking for River City and for this church, Jesus is in that boat. Looking for us. But sometimes even if Jesus are in our boat, we feel alone. We feel that we can't do what God is asking us to do. We feel like we need somebody who support us behind us, somebody who get our back. Because a lot of time we see Jesus sleeping in our boat. And we don't, we don't want to bother him. We don't want to wake him up because we are in the middle of storm. And probably this is a lot of storm happening right now in your mind. What should happen in the next two or more years? What will happen with, with this church? We are really gained so much. We have a new building. We have people coming. We have church on the law. We have uh, uh, projects to do. We, we, we're going to do a beautiful basketball um, space for kids in the neighborhood. And probably the anxiety is, is, is a storm in your life. But if you go with this in your personal life, I don't know how many storms you are living right now. It's my pattern accept, accepting me as I, I am. It's, it's, it's my relationship going well. Uh, probably there's a lot of decisions you need to take. And their disciples, they decide to wake up the problem solver. 
which sometimes we don't notice that we have a problem solver in our life, and that's God in our, in our life. Teacher, wake up. Master, wake up. We are dying. Do you care about it? I was mentioned to um, um, Sarah and, um, and Jackie. I'm doing CPE. CPE is a clinical pastoral education, and I'm doing it at Norton Hospital. It's a nightmare for me. I can tell you that. That's, that's not my call. Uh, that's not my call. I'm suffering a lot. I'm crying a lot. I'm humanizing myself because I see a lot of trauma there. Two weeks ago, I just was brand new, my first on call, and I was praying to God. I, I'm asking you that nothing happened. I don't, I don't want to be there. Please, nothing happened. Fifteen minutes before my own call was gone, I received a call. There was a baby who born two days before who was dying. And I was the one who needed to tell the news, bad news, to the family. I wasn't prepared for that. I, I, I need to be honest with you. I wasn't prepared for that. And all the pro Bible promise came to my mind at, at once. I will be with you. Uh, passing through the shadow of the valley of death, you know, uh, prepare table before your enemies. All those Bible promises that you probably already know come to my mind at once, but still doesn't have the strength to go to that room with family and tell them, you little beloved who, who born two days ago already died. Still like that. It's so hard. I'm, 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 I'm going to be a grandfather. So I put myself in their situation. What if that happened to me in a few months? You know, I was crying. But I'm there to give spiritual and, and emotional support to family. But how do, can I give something that I don't have? Because I was, I was crying. I was, you know. So in my mind, I say, hey, Michael, you need to put yourself together. God is with you. So I drink some water. I exercise all those therapy that they teach you to do, like breathe in, and breathe out, count to three, uh, five, four, three, two, one, all that you know and, 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 and I know and I look on the internet how to be calm, you know, Google know everything in this time. I went there and I was in that room and I tell them the bad news. And the father asked me, Pastor, can you pray? And I said, yes. So I pray, and right after I pray, grandfather starts singing, all children go to heaven. I can tell you that that was a pain relief for me. Right when I leave that room, God told me, I promise that always I will be with you. And sometimes we don't feel ready to do things. But I'm, I'm, I'm experienced more than once that God do not call people who have experience. He equip the people he call. If you feel like you can't do it, you are in the right spot. Because that's what God wants to show up. He want the glory. He want the honor. He want him to do his job. And sometimes we play a lot to be God. We want to control things. I will put this here. I will do this at this certain time. I will do th this when. In that boat, there, there were a lot of fishermen. People who probably this storm, which I like the way, um, um, I like to mix versions like this one say uh, a, fu a furious squall, but the, the um, King James say great storm. And if I'm going to mix it, I will, to, to get worse, I, I will say a furious great storm. And sometimes it's great and also furious. And also you feel like it's drag you to hell 
Sometimes you feel like the world do not exist around you. That you will not survive to the next day. These people, most of them, they had the capacity to navigate that boat onto the other, other side. Because they were fishing. That was not... I guess that wasn't their first storm. As I guess, this one is not your first storm as well. I remember two, three years ago, River City, flooring in the city, seeking church to have a Sunday morning service. We have some of them. Leadership and Pastor Derek was hunting for buildings to do Sunday school. You remember when, when, the college, what's the name of the college? Camusville College say, we can't have you here anymore. And here we are. After every storm, when God is in the boat, beautiful things happen. If somebody tell you two or three years ago that you will have a meeting in this beautiful building, that you will have new floors, beautiful office, and all the plans you have in mind right now, because I, I know you are ambitious about this. I know you see this full of people, full of children, full of community events, full of things happening. I know that, because I'm in that boat with you as well. But let us remind that Jesus Christ, that God, is with us in this boat. And even if the storm is, what's the word? Furious. The victory is for us. I like everything you have there. By grace, you have been saved. No greater love. Healed by his wound. God so loved the world. That promise, we need to live, live with that promise. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on occasion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Don't you care if we drown? Don't you care if we drown? I'm, I'm come from Hispanic culture. And Hispanic people, uh, probably you, you know many Hispanic people. Uh, Hispanic people, we... Um, um, we ended with, with um, conclusions so fast. So fast. I mean, if you do something to me, I say, he or she did this because of this. So we don't give space to dialogue things, to talk about it. We just get to the conclusion and that's it. We move forward or move backward, you know? Uh, and. That, that was the disciple did with Jesus Christ. You don't care about me. And how many times have you think that God do not care about you? That's crisis, crisis, crisis are still speaking with this accent because the most, the most I work with, the most worse it come. Um, that's crisis of pain. That when we are passing through a big, furious, great storm, we don't see God. And we start with the why questions. Why me? Why if we're doing the best? Why if I'm not a bad man or bad woman? Why, if, why me? Why all the people who don't love you or don't worship you? Why if I'm going every Sunday to, to church? Why if I do good with other people? Why me? I do not deserve this. There is a theologian called Gustavo Gutierrez. He's from uh, Peru. Um, he has a theology of um, retribution. If you do good, good things will happen to you. If you do bad, bad things will happen to you. But we already know that that's not true. Bad, bad things happen to good people. And good things happen to bad people. 
and God has nothing to do with that. And even if you feel alone, God is with you. God is with you. I want you to tell the person next to you, God is with you. Just, just tell you, God, in the middle of this, in the middle of this furious uh, gray storm, God is with you. He got up. Now is when Jesus appeared. And I'm almost finished. Don't get nervous. <laughs> uh, he, he, he got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the wave, Quiet, be still. And I want you to remember for the rest of the week these two, two words. Quiet, three words. Quiet, be still. Are you applying for a new job? Quiet, be still. Are you uh, passing through something hard, the great storm? Quiet, be still. You name it. And I will tell you, quiet, be still. Quiet, be still. God have everything in control. Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down. And it was completely calm. That, that's how, how we call catharsis. Right? Completely calm. Relief of pain. Relief. Oh, my gosh. I thought I'd never wake up again. I'm here. It's a new day. Because the mercies of the, of the Lord is, is renewing every day and new every day. That's why I give thanks every time, God, for the new day. Because it's a new opportunity. It's a sign that things, all things have died, and here it is. New beginning for me. New beginning for me. He said to his disciples, he's talking to us right now. Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? If, if you read the whole chapter, in, 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 in the beginning of the chapter 4, he starts with the pa parables, parables, parables. And, and he tells them the purpose of the parables. And from chapter 4 to chapter 8, I, I'm, I'm challenging you to read that because that's beauty uh, on, on the Bible. It's those teaching moments of Jesus Christ teaching us how to have faith. But still, we don't have faith. Still, we uh, find ourselves some moments um, Asking God, why are you doing this to me? They were terrified and asked each another, who is this? Even the wind and the wave obeyed him. This, the series we are doing is new life in spirit. And that's what you have. You have new life in spirit. I will finish with this. I met. A friend of mine who he was, um, 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 he was in um, high school, eight to, 8 to 10, high school with me. He's coming to TDA. And I invited him to our house. He had been to our service twice. And he told me, you are a total different person. You are different than the Michael I knew. You are so serious. You are so focused. You are so successful. Why is that? Because I feel like I'm still the same. And I tell him, God changed everything. The Michael you knew was the Michael without God. The Michael you see now is the Michael with God. God bless you so much.
Jesus Christ. I'll see you next Sunday.